I'll do it like the other. The governance thing and changing our ordinance, I will call, do a roll call, so we'll be more like the other committees. Um, Michael Griffin? Present. Eva? Present. Sus Sue? Present. Pa Sue Polidura, present. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Did you only know, know me for like I know. 30 <laughs> years, 20 I years? Just went, my, my mind just went blank for your last name. Voice. Voice. Um, I'm here, Susan Terry. Don Rogerson. Don Rogerson, thank you. Um, I'm sure there's a little humor on our videos if anybody watches them. Um, well, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Suzanne is in Ohio doing a family event. So Cynthia, who is her administrative assistant for about everybody up there, <laughs> um, is going to take notes today. Um, so I guess we can get on our way. I will just start with the agenda and stick to that. Um, so we can't approve minutes because we need seven people, not just six. Um, going forward, if the agenda gets changed, uh, the ordinance gets changed, we'll be fine with six. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the biggest reasons. We more than average. We seem to be able to bring six in yeah. um, every time. So. Which I'll just put out, I'll get to it at the ordinance. Um, slideshow of completed and future cemetery projects. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I apologize. I could not get all the pictures that I wanted. Uh, my computer ate them. I know they're on there someplace. And if anybody knows of a good um, photo managing um, application, let me know because I just use. Microsoft and it's awful mm -hmm. and I get frustrated with it. This is the wall um, or the lack of wall. This is the hill by Cotton Cemetery and uh, as you can see if you look close on the left hand side you can see the wall there and then you can there is no wall and then it continues to go on. So is that from the playground? That's from the playground. Okay. So, can, next picture, please. Not playground, I guess, fields. Ball field. Yeah, ball, ball field. field. Thank you. Oh, oh, and they're not in order, because one of the things it does, no matter what I do, it places them in the order right. of the date of the picture, yeah. instead of letting me create my own show. So anyway, so that's Hall Cemetery, which, I'll update right now is the survey um, as to what the right of way is from South Street to the back has been completed. And next uh, Wednesday, I am on the agenda for um, trees and greenery and um, just get an update from them when they're going to do a walkthrough. Uh, so they can actually see not only the cemetery, but also the path that leads up and what kinds of removal of trees that we're talking about. So that's on its way. Hmm. Next. Oh, oh, this is Cotton Cemetery. Um, this is the big gun in Cotton Cemetery. Um, his it's Peter Shores. He was the first. I don't know what comes after. Who, who comes after the captain? The first mate or something like that? Huh. I don't know what the, the official title is. Mm -hmm. But he was with Tom, Captain Thomas Thompson when the Raleigh was launched over off of uh, Badger's Island. So he, you know, he was on that ship and helped command it, uh, or second in command or whatever it is. So. Um, in every cemetery, I'm sort of trying to find not real big names like Whipple, but in names of people that were really active and people can relate to the Raleigh, which is the ship on our flag. So, and he was a part of that original crew when it got launched. Mm -hmm. um, so he is buried there. So, so do I you just, know if he was a Portsmouth native or he just died here or? No, he's a Portsmouth. The Shores go back. Okay. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, his son, Peter Shore Jr., is buried in Hall Cemetery, oh. and he was lost at sea. And, and 
someday or somebody else wants to research it, I don't know if he was lost at sea during a fight with, on a ship. I, I don't know what ship he was on, but we maybe had a, a lot. storm. There was uh, a lot of that, yeah. a storm at sea. Yeah. But there are a number of sea captains buried in all of these cemeteries, and a lot of them were on privateers that fought in the war, too. It wasn't just the Continental Navy. So, um, like I said, in some day when there's nothing to do. But anyway, his son and Captain Janvrin and a couple others are buried in Hall Cemetery, but all in that that time frame that they would have been a part of the revolution in so some he, form. So he wasn't exactly lost at sea then? Peter Sr. wasn't. His no. son, Jr., was lost at so sea. He's, he's not. He's, he's, he's not buried here. Oh, oh, no, they just have a headstone for him. Yeah, it's, it's what do they call it, a cenotaph? When they have just a, head, a memorial with that remains? Yeah. I think it's called a cenotaph. There's quite a few that have, um, when you read the headstone, it'll say lost at sea. Mm -hmm. So, um, and give you the date roughly when they were lost. So this is in Cotton Cemetery. So next one, please. And this is the pathway to Hall Cemetery that's in, um, that needs to be reviewed as to what's gonna come down and what's not gonna come down. but. We have the money, so it's not a matter of it's just getting the okay from, in the end, the okay from Peter Rice that everything has been settled, what trees are coming down, and when when the project's going to start. So we're on that path. It may be a doable one for this summer. So that's awesome. Um, so that that's on the horizon. So did next. you get some feedback from one of the neighbors? Concerns you? <laughs> well, I wasn't going to share all that. <laughs> uh, the first um, meeting I went to, there was some pushback from some of the neighbors, um, but I think we, you know, assured them, you know, who, we are going to keep it up. We're not talking about clear cutting <laughs> anything down through there. Um, the neighbors were notified that they were going to be surveyed, so there was, yes, some concerns about. We're just going to come in and slice down every tree that was there. So um, we're not. And the city is going to go in and they're going to mark the trees as soon as Max has time to do that, the arborist. So in the next meeting at the Trees and Greenery, I will be able to find out more about that. So, um, And the other thing is um, when it was surveyed, they have points, you know, they have uh, metal pipes and they, those are called the points and they usually put a yellow or orange, you know, tape around it. Well, I saw them after the day that um, Easterly did the survey <clears throat> and when I came back on Monday when I was taking pictures for this, somebody had buried them and taken the yellow tags off and buried them. Because the points were already there, they were correct, but they were under dirt from years of not having them, you know, cleared. Um, so when I went back, they they had put the points, uh, buried them again, and uh, the neighbor did let the dogs out on me. So. Oh boy. But everything is fine. Just okay. I wasn't going to say anything, but I suppose I should just let you know sure. that. That happened. I didn't get injured, didn't talk to the neighbors or anything, but he called the dogs back when I got to the street, and that was it. So, and the, the points are on his property. So, we'll see. But I did let Suzanne and everybody else know hey, I'll step aside and have one of you guys be the front of it. I don't think it's me personally, but you don't know. So, so, but I'm. Positive. Suzanne's positive. Uh, Max is positive. So it, it might just be a little blip. And I also don't think uh, we will reassure them that people already know where the cemetery. The world already knows where the cemetery is. You can Google it. People do know about it. And 
Google Earth will show you where it is, and then you can come to Portsmouth and ask people, where, yeah. you know, how to get yeah. there. It's not going to change just because there's a path there. Maybe a few people might walk up and through there, but it's not going to be a daily three or four people going up the property to look in Hall Cemetery. People going up in there are going to be are going to tend to be historians for maritime or families buried there or whatever, but it's not going to be a daily rush of people pumping through the, the that is the city's right of way. So just so you know, what I don't think we're really up against anything. I'm going to maintain positivity. So <laughs> on to anything else, Michael, that I forgot to no, we're kind of skipping around here, but... Uh, well, yeah, because I couldn't put... No, them I understand that. So. Yeah. So, all in the same neighborhood, I just wanted to show you that there were eight of those brush piles when they got done um, cl cleaning out the side of the hill at Cotton Cemetery. Oh, wow. These guys took, I think it was two days, they created the great big brush piles, and then they got rid of the brush piles in a day. They were originally was, intended to burn them, but... It's too dry or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, with snow cover you could have, but maybe because of the... I think Peter wasn't thrilled about it. Yeah. That's what yeah. Jim had said, so... Okay, I complained to Michael a whole lot, so... <laughs> <laughs> if I forget something, he'll remember. It was very noticeable what they did, very significant. Oh, yeah, it's just great. So I just wanted to, you know, let people see how much work the city has put in to taking serious these projects, so... And that wasn't even one that was, like, top priority. They just went ahead and did it, so... I mean, they knew about it, but didn't make a big deal about it, so... Next. I just wanted to show you what the tree trimming looks like this year after the winter. It looks way better than most everybody thought. The trees did really fill in, and when you drive by, you can see the cemetery above the the wall going yes, forward. It's pleasant. So, mm -hmm. pleasant. 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 Yeah, pleasant. <laughs> so um, it, it looks great. I'm, I'm really happy. That looks awesome. It does look wonderful. Yeah. So I, I couldn't find my picture of the back side of the wall. That's a project that we could put potentially on the um, for the grant list. That we um, the back of it is in really tough shape because everything was up against it and it needs to be repaired. This wall is between 250 and 300 years old. Nobody knows for sure. So. It's definitely worth saving um, at some point, not Absolutely. necessarily on the top of the list. Now, who, who should take full credit for cleaning all those stones? Oh, uh, my family. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, this was a family project because my our fourth great grandfather, who also was a captain, and who I haven't had time to research, um, ha had his own ship. So he could have been involved in the war. He's the grandfather that got me into all of this. And my grandmother's buried there, too. So I should thank him for Captain Ham is his name. And Eliza is my grandmother. So, yeah, all of the grandkids, niece and everything, husbands all came down and cleaned up so there. Nice. It's great. It was a good day. It did not take that long, either. You yeah, know, yeah. and the kids were most of them were teenagers, so they went crazy and had to pull them out of there from not trying to make them spit shined, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Wendell tomb down and back is starting to be in tough shape again. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a really big project, and I haven't gotten any um estimates or guesstimates about it. So, I mean, that's certainly something we could think about, but when was the last time you were in there, Michael? Was it before they sort of shored it up a little bit? Yeah, I, I'd be thinking 20 years ago. Probably. Oh, yeah. I haven't done a lot of research on it, but it's certainly something up there. If someone should come along and ask it. But the door is all secured. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the kids cleaned. There was a nice marble plaque over the top of it. The kids cleaned that all up so you can read it now and clean some of the bricks on the side so it looks a lot nicer. But there are quite a few. I don't know if the cracks gone through, and I don't know if it had the, the grass roof, roof on it to begin with. I mean, there's plenty of grass on it now, so I, I don't know. I haven't done any research. But I wanted to show you how, much, how good it does look, and the back side of the wall needs some reparation, which would not be too, too much money, but it does need to be done. Next, please. This picture is also dual, um, point of graves. I tried to get up top to show you the angle that how all the water, when it does rain, goes down to that far point where the telephone pole is. Yeah. Okay. Um, and see the slope on the left-hand side, all the runoff from the, not all the runoff, because it goes down straight, but a lot of the runoff from the bridge goes right down to that point too. And I do have pictures of where, old pictures that show, you know, that stone wall was much higher. Um, this is, project has been approved as far as, um, testing, <clears throat> doing water testing or ground pits to see how high the water table is down in that corner before we would spend any money on repairing the stone wall. Um, at City Hall, they, that storm we had in December, yeah. they took pictures of everything in the neighborhood except our little corner oh there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so, um, but in that driveway that's adjacent to it, the woman on the, on the bottom left, I actually spoke to her. I knocked on her door. So we were talking and everything um, because she did have a picture where the water came yes. to roughly where her car is. Yeah. So, um, it wasn't as high as down below where that white house is. I mean, it's it, getting there though. It was, did you walk down through there? Yeah, walked down there that day, Christmas Eve, I think it was. I, or I something. don't. Yeah. But um, and I was surprised that Point of Graves was actually pretty dry. But all around it was like yeah, was water. Yeah. Prescott Park. Yeah. That part of Prescott Park was. If you look water. at really old maps of Portsmouth, you have the point of graves be in a dry uh, area that is not, uh, you can tell it was dry rather than what we know today as Prescott Park, which is filled. Yeah, at every location you see it that is just standalone. Uh, mm -hmm. So it wasn't, it, you know, the. Mm -hmm. It right. Was founders, so was probably our founders wanted to make sure it was a piece of really good dry land. Right. And who knows what kind of buildup has happened around it? Or yes, uh, like yes. I, I, I have I have a picture that shows the wall being, the road being much lower. Right. And I've exactly. done a little bit of research, but exactly. you have to go through the town to find out how high they filled it for all kinds of reasons. But yeah, to your point, like that, <coughs> you know, that right point. area, or that center area, um, you know, if that's feeling it <laughs> from underneath, now it's yeah. gonna, you know. Yeah, and and if she's getting water down her driveway, there's some sort of absorption going. But the the thrust of all of it is um, from the. Um, Arche not the archaeologists, from the engineers and everything, that the seawall that's there is leaking water in. I mean, it's still holding out the vast majority, but over the years, the water is slowly from the from coming, yeah. coming underneath and going. So yeah. we could, they could dig there and it could be 10 feet, or they could dig there and it could be just two feet down when they meet yeah. the water. But that's what this was, the west, 
Weston and Sampson. They did up the report. It was forty thousand, or it is forty thousand dollars. Peter gave the okay. You know, we voted on it. We have it's on the project list and not as a CIP. Um, but and this is what I've learned so much of. Right beyond that White House is a utility center for the city, mm -hmm. and they're going to be right. digging that all up and doing this and doing that, and that that date keeps juggling around too. So, are they moving it? Or? I I don't know. I didn't ask. They're putting stuff underground. I I know that, and it doesn't. I think they have to upgrade it too because of all the new everything in town, but they're going to upgrade it, and I think they're also putting lines underneath. So they want to roll, because it's the same company, <coughs> they want to roll this project into what's going on next door at Prescott Park and Strawberry Bank and everything. So that's just starting to be discussed again. They didn't do anything over the winter, so I, it's still on the agenda for them to have this done. We just don't know what, when and where, but the money's been designated, so. Which leads to the second part. I think I have another picture right after. Oh, sorry. Um, the second part, that wall from the left all the way over could be a project for us. Um, mm -hmm. Suzanne talked about, um, like we're doing down at Union and uh, North Cemetery, we're dividing it into two, so we're going to fix the actual stone wall, and then it's it may change. We may actually do, um, we may not have to do riprap, which is a wrap and lots of stones and everything. The state might come back and say they want us to plant it instead because that's the new um, environmental thing that people are trying to accomplish as opposed to just dumping rocks every place along the waterfront, any place, not just here. So um, it's in the middle of being permitted right now, so that's coming along. So we might actually get the, the whole section of Union and North done in one fell swoop if it turns out to be a planting. Because we won't have to pay to have it planted, the city will plant it. We have oh, enough wow. funds and, and do that. So we won't know about that for you know a couple of months, but it's in the works, so everybody knows that. So that's what we were thinking about the wall. There are a lot more cracks and bricks exposed on that section, so we this year we could ask for a built, a grant that would just fix that portion portion of the wall because the other thing is even if we find out that down in that one section that it's really watery but the rest of the cemetery is dry uh, that uh, this the rest of the cemetery is not going to go anyplace we're not going to dig them up and move them or any of that thing so um probably not much to get, dig up well, no, but I mean, not even move the headstones. So, and, and the other thing, to be truthful, I don't know how many of you go by there all summer long, but this is probably our busiest cemetery yes. besides yeah. up on South Street because people run and do everything. But for tourists, there are always mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. in there all summer long. Yeah. So that wall is one project we could apply for a grant and then fixing up this entryway doing the, um, you know, having the, the iron work redone, having it um, reset so it, it's not, so it just looks really nice. So a moose so like plate they, grant would be, probably be enough to cover that. Yeah. That's what I would think, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just like they did with Union Cemetery and redid that whole front wall and redid the fencing and the post and everything, we could do this, or we could do that for this particular. And there's no estimate on that yet? Okay. No. Okay. No, but it wouldn't take too long. Too, to right, right. 
and, and again, my thought was um, why we brought it up is because that really is a real touristy area. So it would be a good representation of how Portsmouth feels about its historical cemeteries. What, was, what would you be looking to do? Uh, to turnstile still works. Oh yeah, just oh, taking yeah. taking it out. Having it re, whatever it is, they, they reflash it, is that what they call it? Yeah, I don't know that chemical term, but yeah. They reflash it, and then we would have the um, post, the granite post would be, I, I'd like to see it leveled off to some extent, not perfect, but take the wobbly look out of it. So, I don't know, what does anybody else feel? I, it's just everything sort of goes to the middle, sort of prop up the middle again, so that mm -hmm. it's straight across. I wouldn't touch the the pavers per se, just the gate. Yeah, or the turnstile. I mean that. Yeah. To me is. Oh yeah. Historic. I mean you can't. Yeah. So sort of just take. There's the, another way to fix up an entry. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, that's what they did down at, at Union. They they took out that fence, the whole fence, took it down and electrified it, or electroplate, I think is what they call it, and then then recoded it with the black and brought it back. Hmm. It, it's a very common practice yep. for wrought iron at this point. So that's one of our options out there in the world. Um, oh, so we're at the same fence that I was just trying to, a wall. That's from this winter, so it's gotten much, much bigger, oh, and I think wow. the next. Wow. <coughs> and then, we? Uh, we can go to the next one. And that's cracked. I have a picture from last year, too, and that split is getting bigger from this past winter, so. Mm. Is that around the corner? Yeah. No. Oh, right sure. towards, it's on the corner, okay. yeah. It's just before you go down in, yeah. Surprisingly, the inside of the um, wall isn't bad. Mm. There, there isn't. Uh, I'll, I'll pass this around. It doesn't. I found this, or I shouldn't say, James found it for me at um, the Anthenaeum, and um, yeah, look what it looked like in the seventies. I mean, it doesn't look anything like that, not even close to that now. So they went down and did some artistic photos. So, huh. yeah, that's on the inside of the wall, right there. Right there. Just, just a little up. Mm -hmm. So they put more plaster on it. Yeah. Oh, here's the other one. Well, I'll send it this way. Okay. There's two of them. That was from <laughs> Theater by the Sea. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so that's a couple right there. And then we're back to uh, Cloud Field. Ah, this is oh what it gosh. looks like cleaned off right now. Oh, I'll pass back this way. Um, yeah. but, but I wanted to show you too that they cut, that was a dead tree. It was a really big one that if it had fallen, it would have um, taken out a few of the really old headstones. But all that other stuff is all gone. Um, and I think the next picture shows that, oh, no, this is Michael's old swing for the... <laughs> that, that was a swing. Yeah. Um, this is a picture that would probably get us qualified to have, um, uh, uh, to get a grant to rebuild the wall, because that's not that far from the headstones that you see right there, maybe a foot, foot and a half. And further down also, there are some headstones that are, you know, only a feet, two feet from where the erosion is going to continue if the wall isn't put back in place. So, um, I don't know how many feet, it, yeah, next one please. Oh, uh, I just, this was all these stones and there are piles of them all over the place on the side of the hill are from that original wall. So sure. it's not like Union <laughs> Union Cemetery, when I did the um, 
walk through with the group of people that are going to work on it. They added that we might have to get approval from the Army Corps of Engineers to pick up stones off the mudflats down there that were originally part of the wall down there. The back, but down here, we don't have to worry back. about that. So um, whoever, uh, whoever we get, I would definitely include them, you know, reusing the... the the stones. I don't know how they're going to get them back up there, but that's their. That's what we would pay them for. <laughs> so, so this is doable. How many feet would you say? I didn't measure it off. About thirty feet is missing. Of the stone wall, it's not. Yeah. And the, again, it's not. No more than fifty feet. Where it blew out. It's, it's, Do you know why it blew out? Did you ever? Boy. Yeah. That tree's 85 years old, so I, no, I don't know. No, I mean, I was just curious. I, I picture you know, it in my mind the yep. same as it is now as when I grew up. Oh, okay. So it's been undone for a long time, so that's why the erosion down that thing is so big. Well, those, those trees that are there, most of them are Norway maples. They, they're, they're holding that slope. Oh, yeah. Oh. Even yeah. Though they cleaned it out and did a wonderful job. Yeah. So the slope is stabilized. Yeah. So the next one. Oh, and that's, yeah. I mean, it just looks really nice. You don't see all those big, stupid, dead. Yeah. Not, they weren't just branches. Well, they were yeah. branches, but they look more like logs <laughs> and stuff like that. So when you come down the road now and you look up there, there's even buds. Yeah. It looks like the New England yeah. setting. Yeah. That you're... In New England, and there's an old stone wall and headstones and what what it probably looked like. And another fact that I found out, um, there used to be a wooden fence between Cotton Cemetery and proprietors. They wanted to make sure that there was no crossing in between. Didn't say why, but it took a lot of years to get the wooden fence down for some reason. It's, it's in one of those articles. Um, I'll bring them in. I, I found articles from 1853 on in the New Hampshire Portsmouth Chronicle, which I didn't know existed back then. It has it had a cemetery report in a lot of the articles. And I found Michael's grandfather's name mentioned quite often <laughs> in the in it, but um, yeah, that's where I read it briefly from the Athenaeum that there was a big, a big fence, and they wanted to keep it separate. So, so anyway, so you can see right up at top where it stops and where it sort of goes along. So that's a project. So next, um, I'll move it along. That that. Is there any more, or was that the end of it? it might be because I couldn't. Yeah, that's a okay. Great, great improvement. Did Max take that on by himself, or did? No, he knew about the cleaning, but he, you know, he didn't give us. It was on the list. Yeah. When we get all of our stuff, um, goes on a list over there, and when things come up and there's free time because there wasn't any snow this right, winter, right. they sent them over there to take care of that project. Oh, so let me find my, all right, here it is. All right, so um, I'll move on. I'm sorry I couldn't find more pictures one of these days, I will. Um, so we actually talked and we won't have to, what was our May 1st were letters of intent? May 21st. 21st, so yes. we still have time. Yes, um, the seminar is April 15th, 17th. Right. Okay. So, and I've signed up for it. This okay. is to, to learn how to write a, an L chip grant. <laughs> okay. So, I've signed up for that. And then the letter of intent is June, as uh, May 21st. And the, the project, the proposal itself is June 21st, I think. Gotcha. Um, so, I, I will write up a full list. Um, um, of what we've discussed here, and if I think of anything else that you you guys can look up, uh, you know, review it too, and and think about it. So the next meeting, 
we'll come up with, um, you know, which grants we want to go for and which projects that we would put out there. Um, also, because we'd have that would be good. Yeah, Suzanne would also have to talk to Peter Rice because um, what we pick again might coincide with something that's going on that she may not know about. So, but we'll get it done by the uh, next next meeting in May. Um, so we have the L chip, which is why don't you explain them? L chip is up to eight. Um, eight. Money wise, yeah. When you go on the 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 L chip website, it's so confusing. It, it is confusing, but they have given away hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. just to one entity. Yeah. Um, and so, um, but this is different than the Moose Plate grant, which is twenty thousand dollars or or under. This is almost, in a sense, the sky's. The sky is the limit, but it's much more involved, mm -hmm. as it should be if you're going to ask for that kind of money. Um, there, there's a lot more that needs to be done to send in. Actually, Sue came came over to my house last week or the week before, and we we talked about, um, you know, what would be needed and how to how to go about it. Um, in our talks, we we focused on point of graves. Mm -hmm you know where the where the money should go um <coughs> and we talked about seventy five thousand dollars is that what we yeah had? they had estimated the rebuilding that wall well if we did the one that sunk it would be 150 but if we do the section to re-plaster it and the whole thing would have to we couldn't just patch it right We'd have to do the whole thing wouldn't be that much but it wouldn't be that much because I'm sitting here thinking, well, should we ask for a hundred thousand just to no? No, we'd have, okay. We'd have to get a couple of people to come look at right. it. Right. So, right. Uh, but the biggest thing we talked about too is we already have where we have reports done, edge report, this right. report, um, the uh, assessment report. They're all legitimate there, there, reports. There are things in preparation that will make it a lot easier. It right. certainly are extremely legitimate and. Right. in their presentation. So we won't have to go out and do a ton of research. We have some of the biggest parts have already been done for us. So, so and then I still haven't been able to find out there's supposed to be this new conservation grant. I can't get anybody to give me an answer exactly what huh. that is. So um, I've text, not text, I've been in touch with Amy Dixon and Brandy Layton who have done uh, grants for us, but they're really swamped up there, so no one's gotten back to me. And also, the same thing happens up there. What uh, it was people from Pickering um, that told me about this grant, but sometimes people interchange words, so you don't know. It, it might just be one of the two that already exists. So we'll find out about that. Um, and the CLG um, should be approved by April 24th. Um, and just keep your fingers crossed, because what that means is um, if the state will help us progress to get um, Point of Graves and Pleasant Street on the registries, on we can go for either the na National History uh, Registry or the state of New Hampshire, and I'm not sure that um, Cotton uh, qualifies for it. I mean, the upper part does, so I don't know with a lot of newer grave uh, headstones down below, but definitely those two are um, qualified, would qualify to be on the registry, which I, you know, it should be out there. And also, um, again, it just represents that we take part in our city. Um, and what we think of our cemeteries. So um, that that will become available too as we go along. Ordinance change. Um, they had the first meeting, uh, not meeting, first reading, first reading was last, uh, this past Monday. Next one will be the 17th, and if anybody has any problems with the ordinance being changed, that's when people would speak up. But 
um, don't know of anybody that would is up would, has a problem changing it. It brings us in line with everybody else, all the other committees. And if you haven't submitted your application to stay on the committee, we need you to do it as soon as possible. I've done that. So how will they chop up the? I think on it on it said the period, first the periods so we don't all oh retire at the same time. It. They said the first I, it was either the first four or five people that get their applications in um, will be the two year, and the rest will be for one year. But I mean, people it just means you'd fill out another application. Another application, just saying that you're on the committee yeah. and it. I just has to go before the before the um, council again, but they're really supportive of us. So um, I if it was you can, for the first is it four or five? I couldn't remember. Have four years and the rest have three years. I don't know. Oh <laughs> no, I I have a copy here. I I okay. I think it's two and one for some reason. Okay. Um, I, I may be wrong, but again, it's just a matter of power. It wasn't in the ordinance. It was in her message that she sent. Uh, history. I can't find it right. Oh. Oh, you're right. Members appointed after adoption of this ordinance shall be appointed to terms of three years commencing and two. I'm sorry. Thank no you. Problem. No problem. Just three and two. So for some reason I thought it was two and one. Oh, maybe that's what's on there now. That might be what's on there yeah. now. Yeah. Um, okay. So again, if you haven't gotten it, it, I mean, if you miss it, that's fine. You can just still send it in. It will just mean You'll just go on another group of people that the city council approves. So, um, distribution of rack cards. Uh, Eva has her cards, and she's going to start with. I don't know if everybody heard you. The library, the Discover Center, the kiosk downtown, you know, in Market Square, the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, the AC Hotel was the only one that would that would take right. them. But um, I mean, I'm really glad to have them. It's the time to get them get them out there. But I'm sure there are going to be more places. I shouldn't right. say that. I went to a lot of places and they all said no. The but, historical but, houses. Sure. But I, I, um, I actually am going to ask that when I go to the Discover Center, if I could put them across the road in the John Paul uh, Jones house. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I haven't stopped looking, but I will get these, it, the places that have agreed, I will get them in there this weekend. And I know I, one of the women from the Wentworth mansion, that's the one on uh, Market Street, right? The Gray House? No, the Whipple House, sorry. It's the yeah. Whipples with the yeah. tree in front I of it. I, yeah. I've lived here all my life and I can't keep anything straight. <laughs> it's just. The Whipple House. The Whipple House. I know they were interested in oh, good to having know. having it. I'll so. go down there. Yeah. Thank you. On Market Street. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is this on Market Street? Yeah. Isn't that the Moffat Lad? Yeah. Moffat All the way down. Moffat Lad. Uh, okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> and I should learn all of this. Sorry. Uh, um, so I think the um, the green door is done. If you haven't seen that. Um, and another project could also be, and that was on the um, uh, that group of um, pictures. Um, I would really show the other the, the other doors. It doesn't show them very well, but <laughs> it does. Yeah. Really uh, the no, wait a here. Um, I'll get you copy in a second. Um, so that's certainly another project we could look into doing, the finishing out the three doors that are there, mm -hmm. so it all looks good. That side wall is complete, 
Do you, can I have a copy of that wall so I could show uh, this one? Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the side wall uh, uh, going up into the cemetery at Cotton has been done. That, those are the yeah. three we're talking about. Right. Oh, you have. Yeah. yeah. Um, so those. <clears throat> That's been done and it's beautiful. So the three, the three more doors we could put on our list to do also, um, and also the fence, the wall, where those three doors are after the building. That's falling down too. That mm -hmm. needs to be done. So if one is the long one is too expensive, we could always shoot for the side one that faces South Street so that we can, um, you know, perk it up from the street and make people take notice of the cemetery more. Um, and then also the pictures, I, I dug those out because that shows you the wrought iron railings and the fencing down in Union Cemetery. Mm -hmm. I haven't called. Um, the guy down in Northampton, he said he'd work on it over this winter. I don't know that he has, but what it would cost to fix the fence in fences in that cemetery and the railings along um, with it. Plus, there's a lot of straightening that needs to be done down in that cemetery yeah. to make it bring it back to spectacular mm -hmm. like it was. Uh, what other projects are going on? None that I know of at this point. I mean, we got a lot of things going, so. Um, the other thing I want everybody to know, um, keeping history, oh, here, I'll show you and then I'll pass oh. it. Keeping history above water. Um, Portsmouth is part of sponsoring it, and it's going to be held at one of the hotels downtown May 7th, 8th, and 9th. It's an international group and out of Newburyport. I contacted Peter Britz back in January and said, I heard about it and said, hey, do you think they would include cemeteries because it's an issue across the country to decide whether to let your cemetery go underwater or move it. So I never heard anything back. And then the other day I went to talk to Christine Spovero, who I'll talk about, and Stephanie Secord said, what day do you want to do a tour? <laughs> I said, what tour? And it was, we're on the agenda and there's a tour of Point of Graves. Oh. So, oh, cool. wow. so I am happy for two reasons, because it we're starting to be included in things that are going on in Portsmouth. They're not just ignoring cemeteries. We're starting to be a part of their thought process. And also um, that, you know, nationally, I don't know if we'll ever be mentioned again, but we brought up something that um, other people who, you know, will have in their thought process and who will also in the future, you know, be aware of cemeteries. I don't know if they are or they aren't right now, but it just, you know, the more we talk about it, the more it, it will get out there, not just for us, but for everybody. Um, and lastly for me is I'm on the um, archive committee, which is trying to decide what kind of archive the city of Portsmouth should, um, should have can have, will have, whatever going forward, because all the Anthenaeum, um, the Discovery Center, uh, and Strawberry Bank, along with the city itself, have no room for storing not just historical artifacts, but also things that need to remain, whether it's legal documents or what have you. And the interesting part that I didn't think about, because there's a lot of archivists on the committee, that it's going to be a difficult decision because in 10 years, everything is going to be digitized. So big archives aren't going to be needed to store actual paper anymore, paper and books. I mean, we're going to 
everybody will keep what they have, but going forward, more information is going to be on thumb drives or whatever going f into the future. So it really changes the outlook of all of these. But my point is, finally, I told them that this committee are the archivists for our outdoor archives. <laughs> and that's what all these cemeteries are. They are a solid, touch your headstone archive of the history of this community. So the lights sort of went on. It's like, oh, yeah, you're right. So um, they gave me a hard time and said, oh, do we need to dig up some headstones and put them in the new archive? I said, no. But again, <coughs> my point being that we're out there in another group of people in this city, so hopefully people will consider us all the time. So if that's it for me, um, sorry I talked the whole time, but um, if anybody has anything else they want to bring up or question about, so next meeting, before then I'll have a list out to you for all potential grants that you guys can all go over. If you think of anything else, you can add to it. Uh, our name is getting out there, which is really good. I've gotten a few um, emails from other cities around asking about our cemetery committee and what we're doing and that sort of stuff. So we're even getting out locally in the area. Um, so I, guess, I have a question. Yeah. With the warm weather coming, uh, I think that we were supposed to start uh, training for headstone yes. repair and that kind of stuff. Yep. Two things. This week, um, I'm going to contact um, committees that uh, groups that said they were interested in doing the 400 at Cotton, which will start the first weekend in May. And the other part is. Um, we talked about, uh, when I say that, with Suzanne, about getting the heads, the cleaning going at the 400th, right. because we're going to have to have people that are going to want to be committed to starting the straightening, so that's going to be the best place to start. Uh, I mean, I can't, other than Michael, I couldn't come up, well, maybe two other people, but with anybody that would commit to, to the training. Um, so I think that that was the plan on that. So as soon as we start cleaning, we'll approach people who we think might be interested and see. So hopefully, you know, by the middle of May or the end of May, we will have a training session, which Cornyn would like to get some people from the city trained also. Not that they could help us this year, but going forward, you know, yeah. they, they would be able to maintain it. Uh, or know what to do. And they may be able to, again, if things slow down, that's the kind of stuff we can do in the fall and in, in the spring if the ground's not frozen. So so those were, thank mm -hmm. you for reminding me of that. So. I have two things, if you don't mind. No, no problem. So the first thing is, at the risk of embarrassing our leader, um, when Sue and I met, and she started talking about all the meetings she goes to and all the people she talks to. Uh, I was dizzy. I mean, she's, we've, you know, we've accomplished a lot, but, but she has been such an advocate for our group, and I thought that should go in the minutes. <laughs> oh, no. and, um, and also, um, do we want to look for more members? Is there, you know, like, I, I'm sorry, my mind just swirls. And I thought, well, you know, maybe we should go on the city of Portsmouth website or the, you know, the, the you know, the words. I have a news, couple of newsletters. Uh, and, and, well. You know, and, but I didn't know if that was what the group thought, if, you know, if we should look for more people or if we should just leave it as it is and move forward with who's here or... People may have forgotten there's a cemetery committee, or they may have thought like, "Oh, that would be nice," and then dismissed it. But maybe now they would consider it. So I was just wondering what you all thought. That's a wonderful thought, and I tend to agree with you. There's got to be 
additional people. Some out and interest. some outreach. Yeah. Well, what is that? What you know? What what is it? I belong to this Portsmouth thing. You know, it's mostly like, a, do you have a dog sitter for me or something like that? But, you know, I just wondered if. Did it, Carrie put something on there once? I think she did. Uh, for and, and people came, but they didn't come back. Yeah. Remember, we had visitors. Yeah. 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 Yep. Well, so that's where Celeste came from. <laughs> yeah, she Celeste. visited us. So, um, mm -hmm. the we should get Celeste to get some people Talk it of up. her generation. Yeah. To, yeah. Um, not that there's anything wrong with our generation, but um, two things. Um, this sign is going to be uh, the sign came in and uh, the DPW. DPW found a um, an eight foot granite post, so that's coming oh, along. Nice. Yeah, and the other sign is being worked on right now. And good news is there's a new IT person. His name is Monty. I don't know what his last name is. He just moved over from the music hall. Bohanna. Bohanna. Yeah. Oh, very yeah. energetic. Very upbeat person. Monty's great. Yeah, uh, I met him the other night, and um, I introduced myself. I said, "Cause you're going to be hearing about the cemetery committee, so <laughs> this is who you, you know who we are." He is. They're redesigning the whole city site, and what he said to me, not in one fell swoop, but they're working with different departments. The idea for the cemetery page is or is going to become more interactive. Um, so um, that's in the works right now, and I, part of that discussion I heard was about when people go and visit the site, if they want to join the committee or find out more, that information will be there. You'll be able to make donations, and also that's where the database and the map will go. So that's in the works right now. So I'm, I was thinking more along the line of social media. Not not government. I was thinking about the power of social media. Celeste, what do you think? Well, I've been, you know, I was advocating for this when it first started, but the city won't let us have a social media page. But I mean, the one that exists. Oh, anybody can post it. Anybody can post anything on that, so. Right. Well, what I was the unofficial yeah, yeah the the like, unofficial city of Portsmouth, right? One of us could post something, but we're not allowed to. Com other members couldn't comment on it because that'll create a meeting. It would be a meeting, okay, so Suzanne. Right. Oh, I'm glad you thought of, of that. Uh, well, there must be something. I, I have to well, think more about yes. this. Yes, yeah. yes, there is. Um, if we all stick to that, and I could go on and post, um, we're get. Oh, and I will. I'm going to go. We're going to do a cemetery cleaning, but you first have to contact mm -hmm. either one of us because I don't want 50 people to show up. I don't have that that much material for any one time. But we could. You you can you can go to the unofficial, and if you want to start posting a picture of a headstone and do the history behind it. You can absolutely do that. You just don't mention that you're posting it for for the committee. For the committee, um, and you can say that you're a committee member, but you don't have to. But you can post things about the cemetery as long as it doesn't state this is coming from the cemetery committee. So that was more clarified. So um, on any of them. You know, if you're doing something in the cemetery and you want to post it, you can, or whatever. I mean, once we get rolling with it, um, and she, Suzanne, did say there might even be a potential for a social media page, but linked to the okay. city. So okay. they're they're working on like it because it's not just All us. Right. You know that that if wants you look, it. if you go into the a city web page. And you go boards and commissions. It'll give you a list of all of the right. boards that I, are looking I've for people. That. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch yeah, of boards looking I for know. people. Yeah. I know. I yeah. can't even get my relatives interested. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But you know what? Again, I think a good place is when we do the cleanups. I mean, we're only going to be doing headstone cleanups hopefully this summer. 
So I've always cheered on people if you're interested in, you know, talk it up. So again, I will continue this summer to try to get to, that means, because obviously people are interested in cemeteries to come clean the headstones. Devoting time, I don't know. That's a different story. So, But recruit anybody you can. Let me just get a little bit clearer on this um, situation with sort of trying to recruit people on social media, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, if if, if you were a member of an organization uh, that might be interested in, uh, whose members, members might be interested in um, joining the committee or working with committee projects, uh, and you post as a an individual without saying necessarily, or you could say that you're a member of the committee, but you don't say it's a From, committee yeah. posting. Right. Uh, it, is, that, is that permissible? Yeah, you could say something along the lines, Hey, you know, I'm part of the cemetery, Portsmouth Cemetery Committee, and we're always doing projects and we're always doing that. You know, if you're interested, you know, I am me or whatever. Yeah. Right. It, it just can't be directly linked that the cemetery is okay. recruiting. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. It took a while for everybody to, in the city, well, not in the whole city, but it took a while for people to figure out what. Because the skateboard um, committee, they have a um, Facebook page, and but it's only the person that is doing some fundraising and stuff like that, and she doesn't mention that she's doing it with the committee. Because uh, I asked mm. about that, so as long as we're careful of how we word it, then then it's okay. So. Well, I'm glad there's be attention at least being paid to it yeah. in some in some places. But yeah. I know Sue's right that there all the all the committees are hurting for people. Yeah, it's it's. But a, we're so tied to the 400th anniversary, which also is not a city project. They have their own yeah, page, right? But everybody thinks it's a city committee, right? But it's not. Right. So it, the reverse well, has happened. <laughs> so, which causes some. Problems for them, but I gotta go. See all right, Bye, thanks so a lot. Nice. See you later. Um, you know, causes problems for them um, because they they uh, the, the the plagiarism thing that's going on. Yeah, mm. they automatically went to the city, thinking it was the city that was involved, and they were the ones that picked the design and everything, but it wasn't. It was the 400 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who the city supports, but has nothing to do with. You mean the art the art piece? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, it's, it, you can see how it's tricky. It goes both yeah. ways. So, anyway. Motion to adjourn. Yes. <laughs> I second. <laughs> One day will be formal, formal, but...